Hello, I'm an internet company. And I'm the government. I made a website urging limits on government surveillance. I made a commission that's exploring limits on government surveillance. I have only your best interests in mind. I have only your best interests in mind. I collect and analyze your data to make your life more convenient. I collect and analyze your data to make your life safer. I mine endless data for commercial purposes. I mine endless data for intel purposes. I have a clear terms of service agreement. Everyone knows about. So do I. I fought to weaken privacy legislation. So have I. I track people everywhere with personal profile data. Um, I do too. I track political and religious preferences to sell ads. I track political and religious preferences to, um, never mind. But your spying is hurting my business. Couldn't have done it without you. Uh, but you don't understand. I, I only, only want, want what's, what's best, best for, for business. America. Hi there, I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. This is the start of a great show. Right? This is our 2013 wrap-up. You know, and we've got to take a look at 2013 because there were so many stories that were missed by mainstream media or just weren't covered appropriately. That's right. But the biggest story of the year, of course, was the Snowden disclosures. You know, when Edward Snowden stepped up to bat and started talking about what went on, entire countries were paying attention. That's right. And there was some blowback towards the U.S. for their overreach on their intelligence services. Blowback? Just a little <laughs> bit. And then we're here. We've got a whole bunch of clips for you. This is a great time to do it. From Kelowna, British Columbia, this is Video Radio. Now, check this out. It's been a bad week for America's spies. Firstly, Le Monde reported that the U.S. had dipped into the phone calls of millions of French citizens. The revelations were swiftly followed by allegations that America had bugged the phone of German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The robust response of both Paris and Berlin has caused acute embarrassment for the Obama administration. In both cases, the US ambassadors were summoned by irate allies to explain. The fact that the German Chancellor obviously had so much evidence to feel comfortable calling up the US president and complain is very serious. It's a scandal that will not go away overnight and it will keep tarnishing transatlantic relations for quite some time. Washington is gearing up for yet more cringing revelations, with reports in a British newspaper suggesting that the US had access to the phones of some 35 world leaders. Euronews correspondent in Washington is Stefan Grober. In a city that is obsessed with national security and the fear of terror attacks, everything seems to be tolerated, even among friends. The problem is that this sort of intelligence operation can severely damage the trust between the United States and Germany, and France, and Brazil, and Mexico, and possibly others. Stefan Grober, Euronews, Washington. So, the Europeans are upset, the South Americans are upset, everybody's upset. <laughs> I mean, when you're spying NSA. on everyone, I mean, come on, let's think about this for a second, right? Yes? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, we've got so many stories that we could fit in talking about the security state that's going on right now. But we want you to do your research, as we say all the time. That's right. You know, while America was asleep or being lulled to sleep by stories on Duck Dynasty and Christmas, uh -huh. the NDA quietly was fast-tracked through Congress. We couldn't find anything. Like, you know, Robert here, you said it, man. That's right. Like, all of a sudden, Democracy Now! and Russia Today are not covering the passing of the NDAA again a bigger, badder NDAA, by the way. One that's even more draconian in nature. Check out this blog clip. Bigger, badder NDAA 2014 quietly passed the House and Senate, and it is on the way to Obama's desk. While everyone is distracted with the holiday festivities, Congress has been hard at work, screwing us over in the name of national security. Yesterday, the 2014 National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, was fast-tracked through the Senate with no time for discussion or amendments. And you know, it's Christmas time, so they just passed it so that they could recess for the holidays. 
The new version of the NDAA has already been quietly passed by the House of Representatives. It authorizes massive spending, including $527 billion in base defense spending for the current fiscal year, funding for the war in Afghanistan, and funding for nuclear weapons programs. The indefinite detention allowed by the original NDAA is still here, and it's actually worse now because there are provisions that will make it easier for the government to target those who disagree. Section 1071 outlines the creation of the Conflict Records Research Center, where the unconstitutionally obtained information that the NSA has collected is compiled and shared with the Department of Defense. The information called in the wording captured records can be anything from your phone records, emails, browsing history, or posts on social media sites. Regardless of promises to the contrary made every year since 2011 by President Obama, the language of the NDAA places every citizen of the United States within the universe of potential covered persons. So if you don't know about the NDAA passing, uh -huh. You yeah. really need to get online and do your homework. No, wait a second. I got this one better. If you don't know about the NDAA, you're probably watching mainstream media news That's because right. they don't cover it. The American government said we can take anything we want, do whatever we want if something happens. That's right, because you know you might be associated with terrorists or associated force, yes. forces, yes. which is a very loose term, and basically it uh, criminalizes and puts everybody on the watch list for terrorism yeah. everywhere around the world. And we made a watch list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're a couple of guys with a video camera. Come on. I mean, we're not even worth watching here. And okay. over in the UK now, yes. GCHQ and all their disclosures coming yeah. out about them, they're busily passing laws over there. Now they're passing anti-annoyance laws. So in case you become an annoyance to society or there's the potential of it, you can go to jail or receive a massive fine. Check this clip out from our friends at RT. Anti-social behavioral orders, or ASBOs, as they're shortened to here in the UK, have been the brunt of many a joke for quite some time now, namely because of the quite bizarre things that police have reprimanded members of the public for in the past. Now, examples include a deaf child being given an ASBO for spitting in the street, or a 13-year-old girl being banned from saying the word grass for saying it too many times, and homeless people getting ASBOs for begging in the street, but that's being replaced with a new injunction to prevent nuisance and annoyance, which is called an IPNA for short. Now, these orders require only that an individual might engage in behavior capable of causing annoyance. Now, the wording of this law is now much vaguer. The punishment is much harsher. It carries a penalty of up to two years in prison. Now, another part of this draft bill that's causing a lot of concern are public spaces protection orders, which could theoretically be used to stop public protests from gathering. Now, uh, human rights campaigners have even launched a petition in Parliament because they say that this is the biggest threat to freedom of protest in modern history. So I feel safer. Oh yes, they'll be locking up those annoying children and people <laughs> in the supermarket line to tee you off as well. Right here in Kelowna, we had the most amazing bit of fascism occur. Strata said that you have to go out and you know supervise your kids 100% of the time when they're playing in your yard in a condo here in Kelowna. Okay, you know, of course, it's a ridiculous rule, but you can see on the national level, on the local level, they're jamming as many rules down people's throats as they can. That's right. But the biggest story over in the UK is the suppression of the press. And yes. for some reason, the press isn't covering it. Wait, what? say it's not so. Well, you know, I mean, they get the marching orders from David Cameron's office, and, you know, they're actually the uh, people went right into the Guardian offices and smashed hard drives into their computers. Yeah. So they wouldn't release any more stories from Edward Snowden. But what we've got right now is the backlash that's occurred, okay? That's right. Because internationally, people are paying attention. They have the internet, even if the governments are ignoring it here in North America. And the world is more than aware of what's going on. That's right. So Brazil, who were very shocked to discover that how much the NSA had been intruding on their 
personal communications, canceled an agreement with Boeing to supply their jet fighters. So it's having real economic repercussions for an American company. So we want you to check this out. Brazil has snubbed U.S.-based Boeing, which was considered the front-runner for a lucrative military contract, reportedly over the allegations that America was spying on the country's president. Now, a deal worth $4.5 billion will now be signed with Sweden's Saab. To discuss this now, we cross live to Curtis Ellis, Executive Director of American Jobs Alliance. Sir, thank you so much uh, for joining me. Now, this seems to be, from what we can tell, the first time a company has lost some hard cash over the NSA spying scandal. Uh, was the U.S. expecting such a fallout? I don't think they were. Otherwise, they would have taken measures ahead of time to uh, mend some of these fences, which have been badly damaged by America's overreach. So with Boeing losing such a lucrative contract and so much money because of the government policies, do you think there will be more private companies uh, that are or, of course, publicly traded companies as well, that are pushing against the government's uh, NSA policies? We're seeing already in the tech sector, Google, uh, Yahoo, some of the larger tech companies are now uh, demanding some type of uh, accountability and some type of distance between themselves and the NSA. This, by the way, is uh, th this situation with Brazil is a personal affront to Barack Obama as well. Now, the Swedish won the contract for the uh, jet fighters. Remember, it was Sweden's neighbor, Norway, which awarded Barack Obama a Nobel Peace Prize on the basis of creating a new international climate. And this was going to be uh, a, a new era of international cooperation. What he's done is, is 180 degrees opposite of that. He is now creating an international coalition against American hegemonic power. All right. Thank you very much, Curtis Ellis, the executive director of the American Jobs Alliance. Thank you very much. So even governments are waking up. That's right. And Brazil is going so far as to create their own email system so they won't be under the watchful eye of the five eyes. You mean <laughs> their own email system? Yeah. Ah, uh, well, we'll see how far, how long it takes them for to crack into that one. We've got a huge special here, right? That's right. We're going to be talking about how the U.S. is abandoning diplomacy in order to act like a fascist. And then we've got more segments coming up as things go up. But don't get confused here on YouTube when we start loading them up backwards. And we, so that's a note to all of our subscribers. And we really have to be thankful, okay? That's right. We're at 61,000 views on YouTube right now. And it's because of you viewers like you. And I'm Darren Howard. I have to say thank you for that. That's right. And I'm Robert Nisbet, and I thank you as well. Okay, so stay tuned. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up. We'll be right back. From the greatest inventor of all time comes Willard's World. It's a magical state of mitt, a truly wondrous place where airplane windows roll down, cars ride elevators, and horses dance. Unlike the windows of a modern flying machine, Willard Romney's fire-safe job-creating wealth onotic dirigible has windows that open. And when they're open, Mitt smells the fresh, clean scent of optimism, which will magically cure the economy. Willard's world is a land of fantastical physics where you can choose your own tax rate. A land where you can call 47% of the citizenry shiftless moochers and still hope to win the presidency. A land where tax policy is made up of small mystical creatures, peace is not something you worry about, and health problems are already solved through the miracle of emergency rooms. In Willard's world, who needs a supermarket scanner when you've got a whole world of wonder? And all the trees are the right height. Oh, the humanity is almost here. All you need to do is come fly the friendly skies of Willard's World. In Willard's World, I approve all messages.